is making a comeback. As election 2020 heats up, the first contest will be the Iowa caucuses. These tend to be relatively arcane party events that most people know very little about. Who goes to these things? How do they work? And how do they differ from state primaries? We've got the skinny for you from someone who has actually attended an Iowa caucus. Joining me in just a moment is Sarah Cowgill, the Red Nation's gal from the heartland. Yes, true blue red state territory. She has everything you always wanted to know about the Iowa caucuses, but we're afraid to ask. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Lisa. Well, you come from solid red state stock. So uh, let's start with a little bit of the Iowa caucuses. I think they're a little bit of an enigma to people. Um, they're just around the corner. They're going to be the first contest in election 2020, February 3rd. So how does how does an Iowa caucus work? Well, there's two ways of electing your nominee for the president. One is through a primary, one is through a caucus. The caucus is basically a gathering of party faithful, party loyalists, um, people who show up and discuss their candidate and what they need. It's basically a big meeting. Um, uh, they discuss their candidate, they take votes until they hash it out. Sometimes they will have a couple of candidates rise to the top. Depending on what state it is, they will have a, a threshold to meet. But for the most part, it's just a big meeting of Democrats or Republicans selecting their nominee at that point. All right, so this is the party faithful. These are true bluers, um, but it's different than a primary. Like in Virginia, we can just go to our poll, uh, show up, vote, get back in our car and go to McDonald's. Uh, but in a caucus, it, you have to spend a longer time there, right? Oh, heck, with the Democratic presidential primary field, this is going to be a long day. I mean, it will be a long day having to weed through all the candidates that are out there. Um, in a in a presidential primary, that's state hosted. You know, the individual states host that. Some are opened and some are closed. Um, if it's a closed primary, you have to be a member of the party to vote for that candidate. If it's an open you can be a Republican and go vote for a Democrat and then, you know, go vote for Republicans in November. Um, but but caucuses and primaries send delegates. And that's the important thing. They get they have to win those delegates because then those delegates go on to the national convention. OK, but you say it's going to be a long day. Why did they have to uh you know, each person comes forward, like now it's Elizabeth Warren's time. And, and what happens? What are they listening to? Uh, what are they doing? Well, mostly they divide up in little groups and they, they'll divide up in, I'm a, I'm a Warren guy, or I'm a, I'm a, I'm working for Bernie Sanders. I want Sanders to win or whoever they, they divide up as soon as they get into the room, as soon as they get into the meeting hall or whatever, but they divide up. They have people who don't know who they're open for hanging out, listening to other people. They schedule speakers. They can plead their case. Here's why I like Warren. Here's why I don't like Biden. Here's, you know, the the difference of the candidates in, in their points of view. And now these are the party faithful. So they weigh, their opinion weighs pretty heavy in those kinds of situations. So the Iowa caucus, it's going to be a long night. It's, it's literally going to be a long night with all of the candidates in the field. All right, and you mentioned this earlier, this isn't like an open situation. Like in Virginia, I can go vote in the Democratic primary and in the Republican primary. In the caucuses, you have to be of that party, right? Yes, yes, they are, they are right down the line. You have to be a member of that party because they're giving you this awesome job of casting a delegate vote and who's going to be a delegate to go to the convention. So it all starts at the caucus level. All right, and then is this true with uh, Republican caucuses? It's true with all caucuses. They're party sponsored. Okay, so that same day, the Republicans will caucus and I presume uh, nominate Donald Trump. Um, as far as I know, they are not even bothering to hold it. <laughs> I don't uh, think well, they're even, yeah, and there will be a lot of, of caucuses and things like that that go on as, as time gets closer. Uh, a lot of states just opt out because why bother if it's going to cost us a whole bunch of money. Right. So as they come out of the caucuses, 
they have to uh, unite behind one candidate. That specific meeting of a caucus has to no. How does that no. work? No. Um, sometimes, and each 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 party, each state party has a different set um, of standards, and that doesn't mean they're all willy nilly, but they're close to the same set of standards. Um, but in some caucuses, you can come out with seven delegates for one candidate and maybe eight for another. Um, and then they got to hash that out, but they candidates can split that delegate vote in a caucus in, in a primary opinion, cut and dried. Okay. In your opinion, is there any benefit to a caucus versus a primary? Um, yeah, I, I think you get the people that are actually going to be energetic and get your butt out and vote and, and holler at your neighbor and make sure you get signs in the yards. These are people that are very, very active in their political ideology. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been very enlightening. I, I don't think everyone know. you know, they hear about the Iowa caucuses. Um, finally, the most important thing, do they serve lunch? <laughs> I think the party does serve lunch, whereas in a primary, the state does not. <laughs> That's absolutely true. All right. Thank you very much, Sarah Cowgill, our red state correspondent. Thanks for joining us today on Truth TV. Thanks, Lisa. Truth is making a comeback.